<laughs> right. Well, are we ready, Sam? Yeah. Good morning, folks. What a lovely morning as well. My goodness, you'd think it was June, wouldn't you? We've had some beautiful sunrises and some fantastic sunsets as well. Excellent. We've no intimations, I think. Anybody's birthday? No? Can you remember when it was? So you, you would know, wouldn't you? Yeah. Right then, I'm going to begin by lighting this candle. For the people who have been uh, affected by this pandemic, these last few years, with the health, with poverty, which is just getting worse as prices rise, etc. For those who are having sleepless nights. And this just signifies the presence of our Lord. Right then. From Isaiah 55, chapter 55 of the Old Testament, it says, Come all you who are thirsty, come to the waters, you who have no money, Come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good and you will delight in the richest of fare. Give ear and come to me. Listen that you may live. Amen. Last week uh, we talked about weddings because uh, we were talking about the wedding in Cana where Jesus was invited and, um, and I was talking about a wedding that I, I'd done myself. But it's so nice when you get that wedding invitation such as Kevin and Susan request the pleasure of your company or with great joy you were invited to celebrate the marriage of. Um, yes, it's nice to get an invitation. And as I was thinking about this, I was reminded of a wedding I was invited to when I was 16, the first wedding ever outside my own family. I'd been going out with a girl just for a few weeks and her older friend was getting married and I was invited to the wedding. I had to register and uh, I was told to get there on time because they're in and out. Well, I got there as usual in those days. I was late. I was always late. And uh, I got there and they're coming out. And I'm looking for this girl, but I can't see her. And um, I don't know anybody else at all. I've seen the bride once, but apart from that, nothing. But they're all coming out and then they're all gathering for a group photograph. And this guy pulls me in and he says, come on you can stand with me so I'm standing with him then the bride and the groom come out at the front and I'm thinking to myself she looks a lot different than this bride then all of a sudden I realised I'm in the wrong wedding so I can imagine now all these years later the grandkids are looking at these photographs and they're saying who's that and they're saying I don't know but it wasn't just one photograph, it was a number. And <laughs> so I was late for that wedding, but I was on time for the other one. <laughs> but anyway, it's lovely isn't it, to get an invite. And this uh, Isaiah 55, it's a wonderful invitation. Requesting the pleasure of our company. Come, come to the waters. And it's given with great joy. It's an invitation to come and share in the life of God. It's an invitation not only to the righteous, but to the unrighteous. An invitation to those who have ignored God 
and have done their own thing, an invitation even to the wicked. Because the reading goes on to say, Seek the Lord while he may be found, call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on them. To our God, for he will freely pardon. What does that remind us of? Well, of course, it reminds us of Jesus in the Gospels. He too gave that same message with parables of weddings and banquets. The parable of the lost coin, the lost sheep, the, the prodigal son, the lost son. They all express God's yearning for us. The invitation of Jesus and the invitation of God in Isaiah is an invitation not just to turn to God, but to come and celebrate in the rich life of God. Symbolized by water and wine and bread and milk and delighting in rich food as at a wedding or banquets. It's an invitation then not to just to repent and be forgiven, which is good in itself, but it's an invitation to come and share in the joy of the divine life of God. We see that in the Old Testament and the New Testament, through Jesus and the Gospels, this yearning of God for us to seek him, yearning of God for intimacy with us. And Jesus is the embodiment of that yearning of God for us to seek him, to accept his invitation. The thought of God yearning for you, for you personally, how does that make you feel? It's something to ponder then. As we listen to our first hymn, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is. The King of love, my shepherd is, whose goodness fails me never. I nothing lack if I am his.
Your goodness fails me never. Good shepherd, may I sing your praise within your house for. Join our hearts in prayer. Let's pray. Almighty God, loving Father, how sweet it is to be loved by you. Because your love is better than life. Your love is life. We thank you that we can trust in your goodness and mercy. To know you as the good shepherd. To follow you into green pastures and to the quiet waters. We thank you that you restore the soul as we accept your invitation to come to you. And so as we praise you with our lips, may we praise you with our hearts. Lord Jesus, we thank you for all that you have done for us. We thank you for all that you are still doing for us even this day, as you intercede for us before the throne of grace. We bring to you all the concerns of the past, the present and the future as a child would do with its mother. We turn to you now to seek your loving forgiveness. Forgive our thoughts, words and deeds which are unkind, unloving, ungracious, unforgiving. So Lord, hear us now as we confess our sins to you. Lord, in your tender mercy, you have heard our prayers, forgiven our sins, and cleansed our hearts through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, our Lord. Holy Spirit, please grace us with your presence as we continue in our worship. For these things we pray for the sake of and for the love of Jesus, our Lord, the one in whose name we pray, and further pray together the prayer that he taught as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. We turn then to the book of the Psalms in the Old Testament to Psalm 63. This is a psalm that is said to have been by uh, King David, either written before he was king at the time when he was hiding from King Saul in the Judean wilderness because Saul realized that he was going to succeed him and he wanted to put an end to David. Um, so we think that that is the context, uh, but it could be another context where he was king and um, his son Absalom is um, trying to get rid of him and again, He's in hiding. But whatever the context, let's hear his words. O oh God, you are my God, and I long for you. My whole being desires you. 
Like a dry, worn out and waterless land, my soul is thirsty for you. Let me see you in the sanctuary. Let me see how mighty and glorious you are. Your constant love is better than life itself. And so I will praise you. I will give you thanks as long as I live. I will raise my hands to you in prayer. My soul will feast and be satisfied. And I will sing glad songs of praise to you. As I lie in bed, I remember you. All night long I think of you, because you have always been my help. In the shadow of your wings I will sing for joy. I cling to you, and your hand keeps me safe. Those who are trying to kill me will go down into the world of the dead. They will be killed in battle, and their bodies eaten by wolves. Because God gives him victory, the king will rejoice. Those who make promises in God's name will praise him, but the mouths of liars will be shut. Amen, and thanks be to God for his word for us this day. Our next hymn is Seek Ye First the Kingdom of God. Thank you, Sam. <clears throat> oh God, you are my God, I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. Let's pray. Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts and minds be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Psalm 63 then describes um, David's experience of hiding out in the wilderness of Judea when his life was threatened. The Judean wilderness is a dry place 
but the thirst David describes as a thirst of the soul for the waters of salvation for the presence of God. David has experienced the presence of God and he's longing for that again. But now he's troubled, he has enemies who are out to get him. The dry and weary land where there is no water, the Judean wilderness reflects his inner state of being. His soul is thirsty for the living waters of salvation. We can underestimate, you know, that thirst for the soul. Because when you're thirsty, the, the reason the Bible often talks about thirst is because they know what it's like. When you're thirsty, truly thirsty, every single cell in your body, and you've got trillions of them, is crying out for water. Every single cell in your body. That's what thirst is. And that's how David describes that thirst for God. It's the small hours of the morning. The house is dark and silent, except for the occasional sound of maybe someone else who's sleeping. Ah, oh, sleep. It's like the whole world is asleep except for you. And sleep won't come because there's something on your mind. Some worry, some anxiety. Some scenario keeps on playing over and over in your mind. Sleep the perchance to dream. No, sleep the perchance for oblivion. I don't want to dream, I might have a nightmare. I want the chance for peace from those disturbing thoughts. I want some rest from my own head. David knew what it was like to lie awake in the watches of the night, filled with anxious thoughts. And I would be surprised if anyone escapes that experience. At some time in our lives, we will be lying there with something on our minds. And it's remarkable, you know, when you think what mankind can do from a heart transplant to um, flying a space probe through the rings of Saturn. But when it comes to switching off our own minds from those disturbing thoughts, how difficult that proves to be without the aid of alcohol or drugs. The passage from Isaiah goes on to say what we started the service with, Isaiah 55. It goes on to say, my thoughts are not your thoughts, and my ways are not your ways, declares the Lord. Well, thank goodness for that. Sometimes we don't want our own thoughts, especially when they deprive us of sleep. Give me the thoughts of the Lord instead. The way David gets through those disturbing nights is by first remembering the past. I have seen you in the sanctuary, beheld your glory, because your love is better than life. I will praise you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands and call on your name. My soul is satisfied as with a rich feast, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I think of you on my bed and meditate, on you in the watches of the night. For you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I will sing for joy. My soul clings to you, your right hand upholds me. None of this is easy to do. As he says, my soul clings to you. In other words, he shifts his thoughts, uh, not from ease, but from desperation. By holding on, by clinging on. And fear of his enemies and his anger towards them is replaced with praise to God and then believing that in the end justice will prevail. Now I would imagine 
Sleepless nights abound right now throughout our land with the effects of this pandemic and all the other uncertainties there is at these times. Everything seems insecure. Life is wonderful and beautiful, but it's also harsh and ugly. And the cross is a symbol of brutality and ugliness. But because of Christ, its symbol, the symbol of the cross has become one of compassion and beauty. The reason being God was in it. When sleeper loses, the reason may be something reasonably small, such as, why on earth did I say that? I should have kept my mouth shut. Or why did they say that to me? Or it may be something quite serious that has gripped us with fear. Or something that has broken our hearts. Whatever the reason, let us seek the Lord. Whatever keeps us awake, I would rather be awake with the Lord than without him. The men and women we find in the Bible, they've left us a rich legacy of faith. And it's a faith born out not of ease, but more often out of deep struggles and hardships. And I imagine many sleepless nights. Let's hear again then from David. I think of you on my bed and dwell on you in the watches of the night. For you have been my help and in the shadow of your wings I sing for joy. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. Amen. Our next hymn is, uh, is based on Psalm 63. My soul thirsts for you, and my flesh yearns for you. In a dry and weary land, where there is no water,
Thank you, Sam. And as we come to our prayers, I wonder if you could play that during a time of silence again, Sam. Please. Let's join our hearts then in prayer. Let's pray. Loving Father, all the good things we have have come from you. And Lord, we acknowledge your goodness to us through our worship, through our service for you and in our giving. So, Lord, accept our offerings given for your joy, given to do good works for your kingdom, and given for the preaching of the gospel in this place and beyond. Loving Father, when all is going smoothly, may we not forget you. When the going is rough, may we cling to you. When the night has come and the land is dark and the moon is the only light we'll see, no, I won't be afraid. No, I won't be afraid. Just as long as you stand, stand by me. O oh Lord, in the we small hours when worries and anxieties, shame and regrets, fears and sorrows overwhelm our minds with disturbing thoughts that take away our peace. May we remember you. Bring to our minds the scriptures we have learned over the years. Bring to our minds the hymns we have sung. Bring to our minds the times when we have known your joy. Father, we thank you this day that you are our dwelling place, a shelter from the storms, a refuge for the weary, a hiding place from danger, our shield and our protector for our fragile hearts. Give us the desire always to seek you, to seek your kingdom. And as we come to the waters, may we be refreshed. We thank you, Father, that you seek for us even more than we seek for you. You yearn for us even more than we might yearn for you. We thank you once again for the wonderful invitation to come to the waters, for seeking the pleasure of our company. Lord, we pray for those who lie awake with the worry of debt Bring to their minds any organization that might be able to help. We pray for those on the breadline as prices keep rising, with only the choice to eat or stay warm. Again, Lord, let them know of any available help. And we pray that they may turn to the church to seek you and to receive any help that we can give. We pray especially for those who have lost all hope, who are on the edge. May they find hope through family, friends or strangers, through organisations, through government, and may they find hope in you. Lord, there are so many things to keep us awake at night. We pray for the situation with Ukraine. We don't know if this is just a game of bluff. If so, it's a dangerous game, and we pray it will not get out of hand. Lord, give the West wisdom in how to respond. And now, Father, in the silence, we seek your face with open hearts.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And as we go about the coming week, bring to our thoughts those situations that need our prayers, those people that need our prayers. Lord, may we remember you in the watches of the night. For these things we pray in the name above all names, Christ Jesus, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Our final hymn is Abide With Me.
the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit fill your hearts with his love, with his joy, and with his peace this day and forevermore. And all the people said together, Amen. Well, thank you for joining with us, folks, this day, and I hope you enjoyed the rest of your day and have a blessed week.